Hello and welcome to another magic video. Today I'm going to be doing a draft of Zendikar Rising as it is a new set. It should be exciting times. Uh, I've done about like seven or eight drafts of this format so far and I'm not, as of right now, I'm not too th thrilled about it. It seems to be a very high synergy but low power format, meaning that decks don't have that many individually super powerful cards that stand on their own games are won via the synergy between like the landfall matters cards the party matters cards the kicker matters cards this is various tribal synergies and the like um so we'll see uh how that influences our draft process as we go here and let's purchase the item and get started So, I think probably one of the best cards to open that is just like a pretty big bomb on its own is um, Vitoth, I think. The red green rare that ETB makes an 01 plan for all creatures you control. Not, not all creatures, all lands you control. And landfall, you get to put four plus one plus one counters on one of those plants that you made. Basically a slightly smaller Avenger of Zendikar, which works out quite well. We're ready to go, and... Okay, well we didn't get that guy, but we did get a very powerful rare in Felidar Retreat. Uh, Landfall making a 2-2. Two -two. This is free creatures, as long as you're playing lands, which in this format isn't that hard to do. And as soon as you feel like you have enough lands, you can put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control, and everything you control gains vigilance. So you can swing in with bigger flyers, bigger evasive creatures, bigger ground creatures, and still be able to block on the crack back. And these are plus one plus one counters, so it's a permanent bonus. Uh, if that wasn't in the pack, I would be grabbing Cleric of Life's Bond and building a black-white Cleric's deck. That's also a, quite a powerful archetype. Again, one of these, you know, it's a card that you're playing for the synergy. But Felidar Retreat is a very strong start. Okay, a few different directions that we can go here. Uh, so... Black has Vanquish of the Week as a pretty decent removal spell, uh, though we did just pass a white-black card, so uh, that's very po very powerful white-black card, so we're probably not going to get a ton on the backswing. Uh, Rock Slide Sorcerer uh, can just ping down opposing threats or your opponent if need be, and Umara Wizard is uh, one of these spell on one side, land on the other cards, very versatile and can, you know, just pack your deck with more spells. You get to be more consistent. Uh, of those, I think I'm in for the Umara Wizard. I, I like Blue White quite a bit. Ah, uh, oof. But as good as the Wizard is, hmm. Somewhat punished here. Ah. Uh, so Tazim Raptor, it works well with Feldar Retreat, being able to return a land. Let's you, you know, play, just hit, your, hit your landfall more consistently. And it works really well with these spell lands where you might play this early on to make sure your mana is good and then bounce it late, later on so that you have another threat. Uh, but there is a Thwart the Grave as well, and this card is very, very powerful. So it's powerful enough that I'm going to take it even though we're, we've sent a lot of signals to to our side that, you know, black-white is a pretty decent place to be. Uh, so here, there's not a ton of... Yeah, very few of these cards are, like, very truly exciting. Um, Vast One Fortification is a nice card. Uh, Skyclave Relic is one of the few pieces of fixing in the set. Uh, Canopy Baloth is the best creature in the pack. Just is big. Uh, Cleansing Wildfire is 
it's better than that looks for the landfall decks because because you get to draw a card because you get the land back. The only thing you're spending on this card to trigger your landfall is mana. Uh, I'm going to take this uh, flyer. Yeah, that's maybe not the best pick, but it works well with Feldar Retreat, giving it counters. And lifelink ensures that, you know, I'm going to be able to race quite effectively with it. Uh, here, there's a, another Tazim Raptor, which I would be happy to take. And uh, some good blue card. Well, a good blue card and a couple you know, decent filler cards. Though Skyclave Squid is actually a bit better than that looks. Uh, it, it can... It's going to trade most of the time, but hey, you can trade for three drops and a fair number of four drops as well. And is, you know, an aggressive, like, it's still three power on a small creature, so that's not the worst. Uh, here, some more blue stuff. A Resolute Strike, which isn't really what we're looking for here. Uh, Skyclave Sentinel. Uh is good with Feldar Retreat because you can put counters on it from the Feldar Retreat and then it can attack. Uh, so either that or the Marauding Blight Priest. And I'm going to take the Blight Priest here. I feel like I can get Skyclave Sentinels fairly, e fairly easy. They're not hugely important for, a lot, for, for pretty much all decks. So they tend to go around. Uh, whereas Blight Priest is a cleric, uh, I do, you know, want party creatures, humans with tri tribal synergies for this Thwart the Grave because it's so powerful. Uh, here, take an Ox, my fall tap thing, that's not, not horrible. Uh, Nimana Skitter Sneak, this is the first time I've actually looked at this card in earnest, and it is a human rogue, despite the fact that the creature is definitely in your face more as uh, as what this as what this could be based on the art. Uh, Cliffhaven Sellsword is what I'm taking here, though. I need more early drops. Allied Assault is also quite a good card, but I'm a bit short on, you know, actual uh, early creatures, so. Highborn Vampire is like the only real thing for me there. Um, sure, take a Shell Shield. I saw this Umara Wizard. I'm not like, I'm not so in black that I can't just change my mind. Cleansing Wildfire. I will double down on the Cleansing Wildfire. Just in case I do open a red bomb. Uh, get squid. And what else? Uh, Filter Retreat is also... It can be splashable. Like, it's a single white. Uh, ooh. Verizol the Split Current. Uh, really wish I opened this first pack because... um. Uh, my favorite deck that I've drafted so far in this format was a blue-green kicker deck. Very tricky, lots of card advantage, and this is a uh, quite quite the powerful spell. But I don't think that we want to go that direction. Uh, there's Zoff Consumption, which is a fine uh, spell land. Being able to drain your opponent for four can. It's ended quite a few games I've seen. Uh, there's another Thwart the Grave, which is also excellent. Uh, which, which uh, I want to take that, but there also there's also a Deadly Alliance, and I'm a Deadly. Uh, I have a Deadly low amount of removal, if that makes any sense. Which it doesn't. Which is fine. Let's toss these wildfires for now. So we're really looking for uh, some earlier humans or a Zerasan the Trickster. Now that is a powerful card. Uh, it's a rogue. It's got the old ninjutsu ability, so 
it's rogue jitsu basically where you can return unblocked rogue you control to put this in it attacking instead so they're not getting hit by you know the your two power flyer they're getting hit by your four power creature that also takes a permanent from their graveyard and puts it onto the battlefield under your control that's extremely powerful and while there is like nahiri's binding as a good removal spell as well we've got you know we've got the makings of blue black potentially or any number of combinations on these colors and splashes uh because like if you look at our white cards they're pretty mediocre i'm even gonna hide this resolute strike like felidar retreat is really our only selling point in white so far now here uh Solendi vision is a cool uh cool little card but i think we want more removal with vanquish the weak Wow, that's, that's a fair number of red cards. Uh, I guess we're just taking a... God, I don't want any of these in my deck. I suppose we'll take a Mesa Lynx and probably not play it. Uh, okay. So, Anti-Cognition, Deliberate. It was a nice little combo to have in your deck to hold up two open mana and be able to either counter something or draw something. Or a Scry 2 draw card if you... So choose, there's another Tazim Raptor, uh, another Cell Sword, a Glacial Grasp, and a Mind Drain. A lot of different directions. Uh, I'm taking the Raptor. Okay, now we're, now we're seeing a fair amount of white cards, so maybe this is the way to go. To be uh, White Black splashing uh, Zerasan. Seems like a fine strategy. Cutsail Cleric is a nice cheap beater. Happy with that. Uh, Spare Supplies is, you know, a good little filler card. It's like the perfect 23rd card. But your people outside. Picking the silencer, it's a rogue and it is a removal spell, so that's good. These are being loud. Uh, more removal. Ooh, Expedition Skulker is quite important. The cheap rogue for Zerasan and it can gain death touch. Deliberate, sure. Let's hide a couple of these blue cards that we're not playing. Uh, another practice tactics. It's just it's so easy to hold up. And we'll grab our last couple cards before going into the final pack. Uh what will we want the most? Uh, some eva evasive rogues will be nice. There's a couple of the uh, rare duels that are pretty good. Okay, so we got a cleric of life spawned here, which is a fine, fine creature. Uh, as far as other clerics that we have, we've got Kaisel Cleric, uh, Marauding Blight Priest. And that's about it. And do uh, pretty much no other ways to gain life. Um, so it's very possible that I should be taking the Nihiri's Binding instead, but I I think I can pick up something to make this Cleric of Life Bond go the extra mile. Um. Just that one for whenever another creature ETBs, you gain a life. That's quite powerful with that. Ooh, okay. A few different directions here, because there's Expedition Healer, which goes great with Cleric of Life's Bond. Um, this is a Cleric. 
and gains life link when you have this cleric, which wants you to gain life. So that's that's very strong. There's also an Ondu inversion though, and that's it's very expensive, sure, but I I'm taking it. Like we're we're definitely a deck on the slower side. Uh, so I I'm very much in for something like that. Here, there's like Lul Mage's domination is very powerful, but we're we're uh, our blue is on the splash, so can't really be taking a triple blue card here. Uh, very my my control effects are extremely powerful, and having this be an uncommon is pretty crazy. Uh, so I'm in for either expedition. Uh, Skulker or Nimana Skydancer. I'm gonna be picking uh, the Skulker. I think we need more early drops. Ba -ba -ba. Another Blight Priest, perhaps. Either that or Angel Heart Protector. Uh, could take the Blood Price. But I, I I don't have the most three drops, uh, so I think I would like another one of those. I'll take the Angel Heart Protector. Might be a slightly more relevant. Okay, another drawn a Silencer here. Just another you know expensive spell. Um, but I like that over like an Oblivion Hunger. This is a late Royal Eruption. And splash as much as I like into the royal splashing, it doesn't make any sense because you want to cast it with kicker. Let's take another silencer and see how things end up. Another practice tactics, late von gecko too. A lot, a lot of late cards and late good cards and colors that we're not, but there are also late good cards and colors that we are because here's a cell strike. Very easy to just get two for ones with this card. Uh, a bunch of jank. I'll take a relic vial, though likely not playing it. Though it can be good with the cleric of life's bond to put counters on it and sacking your creatures that you no longer want. Uh, nothing interesting here. Kabir Outrider is a fairly powerful creature. On its own, it's going to give another target creature plus one plus one, but if you have, you know, a cleric and a rogue out early, then you're giving something plus three plus three to swing in with, and that's that's very powerful. That's going to be able to attack through anything that's been played up to that point, except for Death Touchers, of course. Now let's throw away the Anti-Cognition and both Deliberates. Blue is going to be on the splash, so that's going to be Zerasan and Umara Wizard uh, to be used as, you know, land and creature. Pick up a spare supplies. Uh, maybe play it, maybe won't. Same with this pressure point. Another ox. Yeah, so we're, we've got a, like a weird... Uh, Landfall slash cleric slash party deck. Oops, you get back in there. So let's see how this ends up. Umaro Wizard and Onu Inversion will count for lands. Let's shave some of those. Uh, Kindy Ox is pretty expensive. Same with Draw Silencer. We can shave those to shore up our curve. Relic Vile just seems too expensive for what it does. Like the two mana sack a creature thing has been in uh, other sets before, but it's usually been in the form of a creature, like a valid Soothsayer in Dominaria, where you know it, it affects the board as well as being a sack outlet. Um, oop. Double clicking all over the place here. Uh, what else? Three more cards. It's possible that we just don't splash this Zerasan. Uh, we don't have a ton of rogues. We've got like a couple Expedition Skulkers. And that's it, it looks like, except for the Draw Silencer. 
Uh, but it's still a very powerful card. Like, even if you're not sneaking it in with uh, with Rogue Jitsu, it still has flash. You can still sneak it in at your opponent. So I'm willing to take this flash for that. Uh, can cut a... Ooh. We can cut the pressure point. That's just a 20... That's like... It's very much the a 23rd card. It's... It's better in aggressive decks, where you can tap down the blocker and draw a card and keep the pressure up. Uh, keep the pressure up. But we're not particularly aggressive. We're looking pretty grindy. Mesa Lynx doesn't synergize well, uh, but 2-3 or 2 on defense is okay. Uh, maybe, maybe we cut the spare supplies. It's like I kind of like it in this deck for, uh, to provide card advantage, even if it is slow card advantage. And a, one of the practice tactics. Because as as nice as this card is to just like snipe something for one mana, uh, you still do need to have creatures in play all the time, multiple creatures in play to really take advantage of it. And the creatures have to be of different party types. Of which we've got a fair number of clerics. One, two... Three, four. Yeah, four clerics. One, two, three, four rogues. Uh, one, two, three warriors. Okay. That's a decent little suite of creatures for that. Yeah, I think I like this all right. It's either this or put in a spare supplies or practice tactics over something in here and, or for maybe like shaving a McKinney ox for something, I don't know. But the ox is, ox is fine. And mana looks fine. I think we're good to go. Ooh. Or I think two pips along the way to uh, diamond status. We cannot keep that. Yikes. Uh, I think I will keep this. Toss the cleric of life's bond. I don't have any any other clerics in play, and any land will at least allow me to play an outrider on turn four. Uh, I would really like, yeah, and swamp unlock Zareth sand eventually. All right, so that's all of my blue sources, which is fun. Um, to play the wizard now. I'm not gonna play the wizard as a land right now. Uh, okay. Well, I could have because of this uh, Zim Raptor, I suppose. But my argument was gonna be I don't have a turn three plan, so I could play it on turn three and not really have to worry that much. But considering I have a Zim Raptor now, that does not seem to be the case. Right now, uh, so now if I don't draw a land, I can play it. And then Kabir Outrider next turn. If I do draw a land, I'm just playing the Kabir Outrider. See what's up. Okay, practice tactics. So that's gonna have to fall on its backside and swing for two. 
not going to do anything with this practice tactics. I'm not going to try to trade it and my Cliffhaven Cell Sword for their core celebrant. That's just doesn't seem worth it. Okay, got a Mesa Lynx. So, I'm gonna play the Outrider here. Pump up the Cell Sword and swing for six. Unfortunately, I don't. We're not really the beatdown because they have a life gain creature, a big creature, and a bunch of cards in hand. And their big creature taps stuff when they play lands. So, unless a good sequence of things happens for us, I think we're actually losing this game. We a lot of the stuff in our hand just doesn't do anything. Uh yeah, I'll trade my Kabira Outrider for something in their hand. Yeah. Here he's binding my raptor. What a jerk. It's fine, we got a Mesa Lynx. I will trade my Mesa Lynx and this practice tactics for their McKinney Ox if need be. And I think the need has been. Alright, so we're really looking for swamps. <laughs> swamps get us very far back into this game. Fortunately, my opponent has a very powerful creature in the form of Kazandu Mammoth. One that I can't really do anything about, but they. Yeah. And Kazandu Stomper, so that they can return lands, make their mammoth bigger. Oh, yeah. That's. That's almost a rough go around. Okay. Let's pass here. Gets bigger. Let's see what they do. Okay, they're throwing down a utility knife to attach to what? A mammoth, okay. Okay, they are attacking with the Celebrant, so now I think the time has come to get tricky. I'm going to block their Mammoth here. Take a bunch of damage. Though I probably should have just play Zerasan, block the Celebrant. But maybe that would have incentivized them to play a creature, I don't know. But I can use Zerasan to snipe out their... Ox, but never mind. Okay. So now I'm just dead. Alright. That's fine. A bit unfortunate, but that that's the way that mana problems crumble, especially in a three color deck and a with no fixing. Yes, it's two col colors and a splash, but hey. Right, so we're going first. Now we've got Zerasan, but no blue this time. But we've got a two into a three, and an onto inversion. 
to, you know, lie in wait until we Tazim Raptor it back. Multiple Expedition Skulkers is nice. Because uh, they'll give each other Death Touch, and Death Touch will make it so that Zara San is going to have an easier time getting through. Play the Blight Priest. Next turn, I can play both of my twos. Or hopefully draw an island to make Zara San into a, a player. Okay. So they play a Skyclave Sentinel. Let's play Expedition Skulker, give our boy Death Touch. Swing with both of our creatures. That's a trade. And we've got a board of three creatures. My opponent doesn't have anything in the moment. Looks like they might be stuck on one color. I redact that statement. So what will be bad for me here? That rare uh, black green three drop is a pain in the ass. Okay. Mind drain sniping <laughs> sniping both my cards and making me discard Felidar Retreat? That's rude. But my opponent didn't play anything onto the board, so that at least allowed me to put them to 10. Hopefully they only play like a single thing this turn and not multiple. Multiple is going to trade with a bunch of stuff. Okay. <laughs> Removing one of my guys, I get to put them to four. Both my creatures have death touch, so they must block. Oh, beautiful. Plus one counter. So make your guy smaller, my guy slightly bigger. Let's take out yours, put you to one. And see what you have. You have a concession, perfect. Got slightly lucky there, my opponent. Wonder what they had in their hand. Perhaps too many expensive spells, I'm not sure. Maybe like three more forests or something. By the way, we snuck away a win. Now we just have to do th three more in a row to hit diamond. And four more overall to hit rebuy. Ooh. This hand has the potential to be extremely good. Uh, Cleric of Life Spawn into Marauding Blight Priest is a fairly powerful curve that we will be able to pull off. Ooh. We even have our, all three colors of mana uh, for Azera San. Now, it's possible that I should have played the Expedition Skulker on 2 to try for a Zero Sand Ninjutsu on turn 4, but I have no way of getting my opponent's stuff into the graveyard, so that's not as good as it might seem. Here he's binding, okay. Well, I still get to gain life and dome my opponent. Don't have any kind of disenchant effects for that Neary's Binding, so... It's just going to be a bunch of triggers. And I would love for it to make a hasty retreat into the grave so that I can thwart it, but that doesn't seem to be the case either. Uh, I'm not trading my Blight Priest for their Mesa Length links, and that just doesn't seem to be the play. Ghastly Gloom Hunter requires six mana to make it into three three life linker. I'll just play for a smaller amount. And 
definitely swing him with my Blight Priest, because why would they block? They did block, I'm very happy about that. Uh, unless they have some kind of raised dead effects, that's fantastic for me. Uh, swing with their Mesa Lynx again, I will do the chump. Ooh, Felidar Retreat is... that was an incredible draw. Now I can start making cats. Meow. Uh, not attacking with my Skulker. Uh, I want to save it to be able to Zarasan when they least expect it. Alright, let's ward it up. Oops. First, I'm casting a spell, so target anything and then target the thing that I want. Lots of triggers. Let's make stuff bigger. And swing with the boys. So we're in a pretty great situation here. We got a fantastic board, and our opponent needs to. Uh, like, if I draw lands, then I get to use Felidar Retreat. If I don't draw lands, I'm drawing spells. Nice. Oop. You get smaller, you get bigger. Then stuff happens. <laughs> really wish I had dis disenchant right about now. Okay, smite the monsters. My point is bringing themselves back into the game. But my opponents, well, we'll see. If they decide to attack with their expedition healer, I would very much like that. Love it. All right. Let's block it, and we're in a good mood. Matter of fact, let's just kill that thing, and yeah. We're going off. Okay. So, two more wins for Diamond. Very possible, as shown in that last game. We have a lot of uh, powerful cards in our deck. The Red Duke, I've played against this person before. Uh, ooh, yeah. I like this hand a fair amount. Uh, Umara Wizard is an early play. And... As a land, should I find a blue source, then I can, by the next turn, I can bounce it back to hand with Tazim Raptor. Feel okay about that. If not, I can you know, hope to draw whatever that guy's name is. <laughs> Let's offer up the trade. Trade accepted. And not going to return that. Next turn, I have a highborn vampire in play, which will allow me to thwart the grave on the. Turn after that if weird stuff happens. By weird stuff I mean them killing just my Tazim Rafter and nothing else. No attacks, no plays. Very interesting. Well, let's see what they're working with. 
Nothing. I like it. Uh, okay. Interesting situation I have here. I'm going to play just a planes and pass. While I am three lands away from onto inversioning, and of course I have a better board. <laughs> No, no real reason to play it. Plus, I like keeping it in my hand just in case I do draw uh, Felidar Retreat, because that is its instance where I will play it. And there's a full fat Deadly Alliance. Okay. So, uh, now I can thwart the grave, returning both my things. And try and raise my opponent in the air. Right. Land was fine, because now I have a big practice tactics to deal with my opponent pulling a funny business. Two lands away from onto inversioning if things do come to that. Three toughness on the highborn vampires. Choice for keeping back my opponents at squad of two power creatures. Ooh, Ravager's Mace. Nice. No. All right, McKindy Ox is nice. I'll swing. It was just the, just the flyers. I've got no reason to throw away uh, my expedition skulker to just trade with. Well, to die into their Goldraz Mucklord, obviously. I wasn't even thinking about that. I was like, oh, I could attack with the skulker. Trade off a creature, but no. Ooh, they didn't equip their Ravager's Mace. Very interesting. All right, well, let's tap their Mulk Lord. And no fear. Deadly Alliance, the Ox. Okay. What else? they have they could double block in the highborn vampire fine by me bring them to three i've got that much power in the air and flyers i'm at a healthy 14. they have a card in their hand though that is priority is waiting for it so i gotta be careful ah they had a valkyrie awakening Ooh, and it immediately went to combat. I like that. And yeah, that's the concession. I won't even have to worry about subtle strike math into whatever the heck they might be playing. All right. Just one went away from diamond. Having no progress on my daily quest of casting red or green spells because I drafted all not those colors. A drink of water. Important to stay hydrated while stomping opponents. And Morgue War Marshal. All these look play on Mog War Marshal. A fun, fun card. Okay, this is a fine, fine hand. Two into a three, and a practice tactics for the cheeky two damage on something. 
more practice tactics as well. So, all right. Awkward position here because, yeah, I'm just gonna play Tizim Raptor and not return anything and pass. Uh, I can't afford to lose my only party member when I have double practice tactics in hand. That's just turning off most of my hand. Ho ho ho! Well, they have no mana up. I will gladly cast a Felidar Retreat. Best part is they can't even like into the Royal It and hope to get ahead. Because while that, you know, is drawing a card, gaining some life, I just play the Felidar Retreat next turn, play the land in my hand, get value. Their best bet, if they have an Enter the Royal, is to hold it for the cat token that I'm obviously making at the end of this. Not attacking with their familiar. I'm not blocking. So, what are they going to play with that Lull Mage's familiar mana? Please don't have a uh, broken wings. I wouldn't use the old mage's familiar as mana, but it would be very, very sad for me. Basswood Thicket, that's the plus one plus one counter on target creature land, so they definitely have fives and sixes that they want to play. They're choosing not to play anything. Cool. I could have attacked with the Skulker and thrown two practice tactics on the Little Mage's Familiar just to get it off the table, but I'm not I d don't don't really want to trade two for one at that into four open mana. That's just asking for something to go wrong. Uh, kicked Gnarled Colony. Cool. And they're playing the Umara Skyfalls and play instead of playing the Umara Wizard. Very interesting. Uh, yeah, now that I have a warrior, I don't need to be casting two practice tactics next turn, and I do want some counters on creatures. Because now I can swing in, they're probably going to block with their gnarly colony on something, I can tactics it away, and they have no open mana to do anything about that. Jump for six and revel in my amazing board state. Skyclave Relic kicked? Okay, make a bunch of mana, that's... That's really cool, but let's see what it does. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay. Up, 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 up. And we're diamond. Nice. Oh, we. Very curious what they had in their hand that would want them to spend that much mana. Or make that much mana. But not gonna find it. Alright, so we're 4 1. Three more wins for a 7 1. <sighs> While I'd like to be optimistic, I think I'm. I'm gonna predict that I'm gonna end up 5 3. That's just what always happens. <laughs> Just enough for a rebuy. So, win the next one, lose the next two, and be left bittersweet, as it were.
But on the plus side, making progress into Diamond is good because no matter how badly I do on the next bunch of drafts I do, I'm not going to fall below Diamond. Uh, the last like four drafts I've had have been at like the start of Platinum, were at the start of Platinum One. Just couldn't get it done to make it to Diamond, so that's good. I'll hit Mythic by the end of the thing yet. I'm going first with an awkward, awkward hand. Now, I cannot justify that, and... I could, I can justify this. Thank you, Umara Wizard, for being a land. I don't have any white, but... Shouldn't be that bad. Throw away my 6-drop. It's like, any land... Let's me vanquish the weak. Any two lands lets me hive on vampire, and I drew a plains, which is fantastic. So all three colors, and looking at a red black deck. Let's improve the board state. A Coom Hellhound is going to be getting in, as it does if you can play it on turn one unlimited. But eventually, my opponent's going to run out of lands and it's just going to be a no one. Now, what else do they have? Expedition Champion, okay. So I could play Highborn Warrior, Highborn Vampire here, rather. Or I could vanquish the weak their champion. I'm gonna do that. Do that before they play another warrior that wouldn't allow me to uh, deal with that. No accidental stops. Yeah, we're 14 all, and it'll be my turn to attack next. So we're doing okay, even in the face of my opponent's five cards in hand. Hmm. Getting rid of my flyer is annoying. However... Now, my board is... has a 4-3 in it, and I've got a practice tactics that's actually a Gideon's Reproach. Ooh, they are attacking into my Highborn Vampire. Cool. Uh, I'm not blocking. <laughs> Dreadworm. Nice. Right, let's let's beat face. And they're taking the full force. That's cool by me. Uh, they must have lands in hand. Yep. Make the Dreadworm indestructible. Now the question is, are they actually going to attack with it? They are. All right, let's toss this practice tactics at this Hellhound. Get that out of the way. Go to seven, but... My opponent does need creatures or removal for them to not die. Which they obviously have, or else they wouldn't have attacked with everything. Ooh, and not quite enough party members to make the full difference. Okay. Yeah, so let's attack with both creatures. Because, yeah, they'll be incentivized to trade off. Play two more. I am going to take the potentially idiotic move and not block. There it is, okay. 
either I block there and lose both my creatures, chump block there, in which case, what am I doing? I'm not really doing anything. Or they have a trick. That's fine. So they were able to outrace me there. That was a bit annoying. I probably could have played that differently, but c'est la vie. A loss at the start of diamond means nothing. Nothing, I say. Oh, I hope I beat this person just because their username makes me... Uh, inf infuriates me. <laughs> Alright, and I think this hand is certainly capable of doing so. We got bear into flying bear. Into a vampire, into double reanime if things get very particularly annoying. Offer up the trade. They're taking it. Perfect. No, you can hit me all you like. Grotag Night Runner. Okay. That's annoying, uh, but if they have any kind of trick or removal, they don't, but they do have a Prowling Barons, which is annoying. Okay. Just him in the air with this Raptor. Now, I could play this Felidar Retreat with no land as a follow-up. Alternatively, I could wait until I have lands and just hold up practice tactics in the meanwhile. Uh, yeah, I think, I'm, I think that's what I'm going to do. Another Prowling Felidar into land, that's pretty good. The question is, are they going to attack with one of their Prowling Felidars, potentially trade with Highborn Vampire? Ooh, they are. Well, let's toss a Practice Tactics there. And... Hmm. Just take the three. That's not that bad. Onto inversion's cool. Now then, I, think I actually want counters and vigilance here. Uh, Yeah, just those. I could trade my I'm a vampire for their prowling fellow are if they have more lands. <laughs> but I put counters so that my highborn vampire can stonewall their cliffhaven cell sword as I smack him in the air with my Tazim Raptor. As that counter improved the clock from seven turns to five. Ooh, attacking with Prowling Philidar. So, if they have Inordinate Rage, Practice Tactics of their own... Yeah, Practice Tactics of their own would be a real problem if I double block. 
Uh, no locks. I'll take three. Kamara Wizard, nice. Get that those counters on, and now let's bash and see what they do. I've got practice tactics up to punish them. If they try anything particularly crazy. Okay, that's just regular crazy. So they did have practice tactics, so I'm very glad I didn't double block. And I don't want you living anymore. Neither do you. Up, up. Nice. And I could thwart the grave to get back my raptor. But I'll wait. Right to oblivion. My vampire. You monster. Fun. Okay, uh... Yeah, I think it was just for the best. So that forces my opponent to chump. And they still have to deal with my flyer or they die in two turns, and that does a decent job of that. Mesa Lynx. Okay. Let's swing with the Skulker here. Uh, now then. I mean, I love the graveyard. I showed massively that I do have a Zerasan. But do I want to return this to my hand? No, I'd rather keep it on the battlefield with three counters and flash this guy in next turn. Yeah, putting my opponent to four is amazing for me because if I draw land, that means my opponent has to block with their Shepherd of Heroes. They have no choice. Attacking with those. Yeah, even though. No, yeah, they, they could always animate their crawling barons. That's the thing they could do. But I am in the business of making them have less things on the battlefield. Okay. Blood the board a bit more, and what's that I hear? What is it? There it is. There's the concession. Yeah, Feldar Retreat is. One of the best cards in uh, in limited. It's it's not even remotely fair. Like retreat to Amiria, which made smaller creatures 
and only gave a temporary boost was already an amazing card. <laughs> so, you know, having the more powerful version in this set is a more powerful version of an already excellent card. Uh, was Retreat to Amiria 3 or 4 mana? It was 4 mana as well, wow. So apart from the fact that, apart from creature type, like, yeah, strictly better, I'll take it. Washu. Ooh. This is an awkward hand, as practice tactics does nothing, because there I've got birds and oxes, and apparently those aren't a valid D&D party. That's fine, I'll keep this for now. Got an island, which is cool. Hmm, looks like some blue-black rogues are in my future. I'm not going to settle strike for now, because I figure, figure I can maybe do something else. Oh, goodness gracious me, that's a relic golem. Well, hopefully my opponent will you continue to use well not continue will use their mana on the relic golem to mill me instead of committing more to the board and I draw a removal spell nuts not quite uh, but I can play this cliffhaven cell sword and leave up this subtle strike. Walk here, see what they do. Drink that, buff that. Cool. Oh boy, Myriad Construct, that's a, that's a beater for sure. Alright, so I've got an Ox, and yeah, let's, let's hit them. It's no time for cowards. Well, we need to activate a relic golem twice to be able to attack my. Ooh, that's a pain in my ass. Okay, now they can attack with their myriad construct. If I block, my McKinney Ox will die, then my opponent's relic golem will be active. Crud. Yeah, I think I just have to do that. Let's Tazim Raptor Arena. Possible that we can race in the air should we draw ground creatures. OK, 
Okay, another skulker. Let's pop it. <laughs> Crud. Okay. Hit them. Keep the swamp in hand. We'll need to draw well <laughs> to get out of this. Uh, Thwart the weak would, or Thwart the grave, whatever the heck that card is, would be nice. That gets back Cliffhaven's Cell Sword and McKinney Ox. Or they could bounce my blocker. That's fine too. And away we go. All right. No worries. No shame in losing to a Relic Golem. And... That's 5-3, as predicted. <laughs> well, that was... That was fun. Got a rebuy. Uh, got another Felidar Retreat for potential constructed decks. I think the card's pretty sweet, so... I might try doing some business with that in the near future, but yeah, this is back to the grind for me in terms of making magic videos. I know I've been on a bit of a hiatus recently. Uh, I, I swear I tried to make some uh, on release day for Zendikar Rising, but the server issues were so bad that the videos were pretty much unusable, plus I just got frustrated uh, but servers are you know stable now so we should see more from me in the future heck if i end up liking this set enough i might even do a full limited set review of it but that is stuff for another day uh see you another day